presented by Brothers Truck Parts. Here's H&M Saw's Project Hudson Hornet. Today we're going to be attacking the carburetors on our 54 Hudson, and I've got my good friend Wade from Merlin Auto Group, a local Ferrari service shop here in Atlanta, coming to show you guys the correct way to rebuild a carburetor. Thanks for having me, Sam. Anytime. Thanks for coming out. So you contacted me on this 54 Hudson with, these, with the carburetor, and uh, it's a unique piece. It's a single barrel carter. It's called a WA-1. And the part that was difficult about this one is because it had been sitting a long time. So gas evaporates, all the leftovers create all kind of headaches. So this one, the main thing was to get it disassembled and then clean. And I've had customers that come in and go, yeah, my car's not running really good. I think it's the carburetor, but I sprayed it down with some carburetor cleaner. And didn't really help. Well, that's great. It looks good on the outside, but does it work? No. Part of the reason it doesn't work is because there's all these little bitty intricate pieces with holes in them and orifices in them, and they all have to flow exactly right. So once we get it apart, like we've done here, and we clean the body of the carburetor, the body of the carburetor also has many passages. You can see anywhere there's a little passage or a line like that, that's, that's flowing something. So we have to clean everything, all of the jets, all of the emulsion tubes, all of the orifices. Once you get that done, then you can reassemble the carburetor. And the cleaning is the most important part of a carburetor. And I tell people, some of the holes in these carburetors are not much bigger than a couple of human hairs. So if it's half closed, that's a 50% restriction and the car's not gonna run right. Tell us about the power valve you found broken in one of them. This is called a, a vacuum piston or a power piston. Basically what this does is it hooks this little lever right here. There's a pin that's supposed to hook here. We have another one that, that, to replace it. So when it's in the carburetor, it fits in this hole right here. And when it's running, it's controlled by vacuum. So as the vacuum works, it pulls this valve down. This valve goes down into the jet. So as it goes into the jet, it'll actually restrict the fuel because it's blocking off the hole. So when the vacuum is on, it pulls it down, restricts the fuel, blocks it off, leans it out so it runs better. Once you step on the gas, you want more fuel, you want it to go, the vacuum goes away, the spring pushes it out of the way, you get full flow. With it broken, it's just not working right. So the metering of the fuel is completely wrong. So what would that do if you were in the car? What kind of, uh, you know, what would you feel? What kind of symptom would the person feel? Well, one of the things when the vacuum comes on, if, if it can't pull on this arm, it's not gonna drop it down. So it's gonna run rich all the time. You might smell it at idle, it's, it smells really rich, a lot of burned fuel. And then if it, if it gets down and you, you step on the gas, and it's not pushing the right way, it just creates all kinds of headaches. Sometimes it can be lean, sometimes it can be rich, depending on which way it sticks. But broken is never good. Absolutely. So do you have one that's already been done that you can show us? We're gonna show you the other one that, uh, we're gonna assemble uh, the other one and show you um, all the pieces going together and some of the intricacies of setting up the float height, which is very important. So let's go ahead and get to the assembly part. We have another one here we're gonna assemble. So we're gonna go over some of the important steps to look for when you're assembling. And one of the most important is the float bowl height. That's this right here. The float actually controls how much fuel is in the carburetor. The fuel pump pushes it in, fills it up, shuts off the fuel, lets the fuel flow, shuts off the fuel. This particular one has to be a half an inch. We've already gone ahead and set this one. It's very important that you set that. Too high is wrong, too low is also too wrong. So how do you go ahead and set that? Funny. It's mechanical and you literally just bend a tab. There's a tab right here that sits on top of the needle and seat. If it's too high, you bend it down. If it's too low, you bend it up. Makes sense. It's mechanical. So you see here, this is the power piston we were talking about earlier, where it's gonna slide in. We also have the accelerator pump, which is this piece right here. Interestingly enough, there's an assembly sleeve on this. You have to have the sleeve on it, and then it actually pushes in and you have to hold your hand on there, clock it, and then we're going to slide everything together here. So while you're holding it, everything has to slide together.
We're going to go ahead and finish up our carburetor, get it all together. I want to thank Wade for coming on and showing us such good tips on rebuilding a carburetor. Next season, you're going to have to come on once we start the reassembly process for you to have to help us tune this thing. Be happy to. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you so much for coming out. Nice meeting you. Absolute pleasure.